a good Monday afternoon to you out there in Facebook land I'm doing a quick Facebook live to focus on something other than races getting canceled or anything like that well kind of sort of so we we're kind of looking at what I'm calling an off-season preseason postseason gap season uh, for a lot of athletes if your races unfortunately have been canceled uh, for the fall they're starting to drop some of those I'm kind of rolling out my athletes and myself we're kind of going into kind of a, a post preseason postseason off season whatever you want to call it and a lot of athletes in the past have asked me you know what what volume should I should I be doing during this time when I'm not really I don't have a, a race in the near future but I want to either maintain maintain fitness or build a little fitness in the meantime getting there but not burn out and that type of thing so these are the tips that I give my athletes when they're entering kind of a preseason postseason off-season type of situation so um, the big key is to figure out your next season goals so if, if this is your end of your race season are you doing like for me Tulsa 2021 is going to be the big next big race so that's going to be my focus is a longer distance race so that's going to kind of change what I do in the postseason preseason offseason gap season whatever you want to call it so mine's going to be probably a little bit more volume than maybe a 70.3 athlete or if you're doing olympics and you want to get faster at the olympic distance uh, triathlons your, your goals are going to be a little bit different and figure out where in the in the year are they do you have a big full ironman in may do you have a full ironman you're going to do chattanooga in 2021 in september so that timing also plays in that as well you know you might have a little bit of time to stretch out you don't need to maybe hit as high or a volume or anything like that but you need to know where your races fall, what your goals are, what your A races are, B races, C races, all that good stuff, and know what you need to be ready for once you get out of your off season and into a race specific training plan. Always promote the bike. Uh, that is the largest majority of most of the races out there. Ironman's 112 miles, 140.6 miles. If you don't get the bike, if you don't train to get ready for the bike ride, the run is going to suffer no matter how fast you can run a marathon if you haven't trained properly for that bike ride especially if it's courses that are that require you know a little bit more effort and energy than other courses you know wisconsin's kind of tough chattanooga's kind of tough tulsa is going to be kind of tough so those tougher courses that aren't as flat that require a little bit more muscular endurance for long periods of time if you don't train right on the bike in the off season to have a good base layer to build on for your race specific training then you're going to be a hurting unit come race day so my off seasons it, it's big on the bike that doesn't mean we're doing hundreds of miles a week you can but it, it means you need to do some quality ride sessions you know some power work and you want to you want to keep working on an aerobic base as well uh, but i'm a little bit more reverse periodization where it's not just all base work and it's not just all zone two riding forever there's a, play, a good mix of each but then you want to look at the run because that's going to be your next most demanding sport. And I kind of put the swim a little bit back during the off season, unless you've got some really uh, big goals as far as getting faster in swim and you have lots of room for improvement. But if you're at a, a 130 per 100 yards and you want to get down to 125, you could do that in the off season, but you'd be better getting your FTP from 200 to 235. So that's kind of my suggestions and recommendations for athletes is focus on things you can make the biggest bang for your buck now if you're a beginner swimmer in 2020 and you want to get from a 220 to a two minute per 100 then your time might be better spent on that swim focus for the off season and then also look at strength i get a lot of strength sessions in for my athletes in their off season and even in the race season uh, but like i said the bike is the big key unless you have things that you need to be working on like the swim um, but like I said, bike is king. Uh, don't skip the long stuff in your off season or your post season, whatever you want to call it, gap season. So if you've got, and, and by long, you know, you don't, you're not doing six hour bike rides like you would building up for a full Ironman race, but maybe there's a two hour easy ride on a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever, that's your long ride. Don't skip it. Don't, you know, and maybe you have an, a 90 minute long run. Um, just don't, don't skip that long stuff. You need that long aerobic work to keep that good base over the over the, the off season when you're not doing race specific training but like i said i've got in other quality sessions for my athletes of doing you know some power work some power intervals doing some speed work working and my goal is to get fitness over this this off season so you're not building up 
for a specific race, but you're not losing fitness and hopefully you're gaining, you're improving your FTP, you're improving your VO2. So that's my take on the postseason, off season, preseason, gap season, COVID season, whatever you want to call it. So that's my goal for my athletes is you start at one side and you come out the other end with better fitness and you're not going to be doing it. You, you know, you're not going to be spending 10, 15, 20 hours a week like you would building up for like a full Ironman race, but the time you do spend is going to be very quality because you're not going to be, you know, two hours max probably is the longest workout you'll be doing in the off season. So you don't need extended periods of time for recovery. So after a two hour bike ride, you know, that's supposed to be easy the next day, you can still do a quality run session. But if you're doing six hour bike rides and you're doing three hour runs during the week, you're going to need a little bit more recovery time. You can't hammer yourself as much with the power work and stuff. So that's kind of my tips for looking at the off season preseason, postseason, whatever you want to call it, the gap in between finishing a race or being done with your race season and then the next cycle for the next build for your next race or race specific plan. So that's my goal. And right now, I like I said, I put it all over my Facebook pages. I post it on all my social media. I have already developed gap plans and training peaks for six months. So it's got testing in there. It's got everything hopefully to, to get your FTP up. It's got swim work. It's got run work. Should be working everything kind of an equal amount really focused on the bike getting that ftp up to make you successful but i put them out there i've got them for the ironman distance 70.3 distance i'm working on olympic distance uh, per request from athletes so i've got them all in training peaks i'm putting in the final surge because i'm working with ironman university and final surge is their platform so i'm putting those in the final surge and then they'll be released on final surge as well i'll put those links on my page so if you need a gap plan for six months if you're looking at a long off season let me know hit me in the comments i'll put them up in there i'll put the links in there maybe i'll add that anywhere to the video and then you can go down there and grab the plans if you need them if you have any questions put them in the comments and we'll talk to you later have a good monday and happy training